When you're on the road to self-discovery, how much pain is it worth feeling to get to your destination? At what point is it no longer worth it to find out who you really are? Is there an amount of pain that would make you look back once reaching self-enlightenment and say, well, it wasn't worth it to go through that? Let's take the famous explorer Magellan, who was brutally killed at the hands of native warriors in the Philippine Islands. He didn't even make it all the way around the world, although his boat did. But even given all that, if he were to look back on his legacy of his voyage today, he might see it as a worthwhile venture. But what about something like the Donner Party? Did the Donner Party find the journey worth it? Is it worth making it all the way to the glory and the promise of the American West if you have to spend the winter feeding your friends to your children? I recommend you read up on the Donner Party, by the way, if you can stomach it. But as bad as those journeys got for the people who went on them, one thing that you can say for certain is they found out what they were really made of. Can you learn that lesson without the pain? No, you can't, and it doesn't matter anyway, because whether it's worth it or not, you don't have a choice. You don't know what's ahead when you set out on that journey. The only thing you believe is ahead is self-discovery or gold or something. You know what kind of journey you're on, but you have no idea what that really means. But what if along the way, things got even worse? What if along the way, you wind up playing a pivotal role in the world's destruction? In your attempt to make it to the new world, you do something unimaginable. What if you're bringing smallpox in your blankets? You've unknowingly unleashed an ultimate destruction magic. You aren't exactly responsible for your actions, but you've got to stop and ask yourself. When everyone around you is dying and it all started when you got there, well, maybe the world would be a better place if I hadn't come? How important is self-discovery when at the end of it, the world is destroyed? How important is self-discovery when the process of discovery destroys the self? mountain lakes because it's like shouldn't it all just drip off the side of the mountain well it all just gets cut like a cup cup, like a cup up there and it's like it can't be seawater up there so enchanting it's like how did the fish even get there Welcome to No One Can Know About This, a podcast where we play every Final Fantasy. I'm Jeff Ekman. And I'm Ryan Kazmiski. And here we go, season four, episode 22. It's amazing how we're now finally to the end of disc one. I know, we're finally going to see the end of disc one today. And wh- where are we in the trip? We're probably, we're three oh days in. Four, half, three or four. Like about halfway. Yeah. About halfway through about the right. trip, which happened so many months ago. I know, it was in October, and at this point it feels like forever the ago. Whole world world is totally different. Well, uh, to throw in, like, some weirder timelines, at the point that we're recording this commentary that you're hearing right now today, we just watched the Game of Thrones finale, guys. Yeah, we know how Game of Thrones ends. Can you believe it? Uh, from way in the future, like, three months from now or four I mean, months? I can remember thinking back to, like, season four of that show and thinking, like, I'm never gonna know how it ends, and I'm so excited, and I want to know all the answers. <laughs> and now... And now we all know, and you've all known for a long time, and I'm sure you made your hopefully peace hopefully with this Hopefully the world garbage. has moved on, and yeah. we're all over it, and we're complaining about how terrible Watchmen is or something. Yeah, or maybe you're but, getting excited for the Arya Stark pirate spinoff. Yeah, yeah, it does <laughs> seem like we're gonna... You know, I mean, I would. I always wanted an Arya Stark and Sandor show. Right. But when I was watching them, I never at any point thought, like, pirates. <laughs> They're going to be... I want them to take when to the, the high seas. And... Yeah, because that was, she was all about exploration, the whole show that whatever was her character anyway yeah she was always in the library they were like you need to be a lady and she was like but i'm obsessed with maps yeah anyway we've all seen it now <laughs> and you guys haven't thought about it in a while uh, but it's fresh in our minds and we thought we would remind you what the fuck what was what what, what was were that they all about i cannot believe 
that the ultimate point of that show was the infighting of man is what's really important. I feel like the ultimate point of it was stop uh, using these shows as a benchmark for your life. Yeah, Don't do well, this anymore. You know, we you lost know, tried to teach us that lesson. Yeah, well, you know. And not it didn't all, all the way take. I'm going to, I don't know, I'm going to only read zines. I'm not going to watch, <laughs> I'm not going to watch any movies or TV anymore. <laughs> Or even read books. Yeah. Well, now that we've reminded you of that, <laughs> let's get to the end let's of get disc back one. To the, yeah, where we left off last week, <laughs> we turned the Temple of the Ancients into a marble. Yeah, Kate Sith died, and then he brought out a replacement like immediately. And then, as we were going to pick up the marble, Ethereal Sephiroth showed up, and then Cloud he gave mind, him. Yeah, he mind fucked us. And Cloud, yeah, purposely gives him the black materia. Mm hmm. While we're down at the bottom of the crater where the ancient temple used to be, everything went to white. Cloud said everything is white. Mm -hmm. And let's pick up where we let's left go. off. Everything is white. What did I do? I don't remember anything. My memory, since when? If everything's a dream, don't wake me. There has been this like regular thing where they keep being like, wake up. And there's like a disembodied voice. And Cloud maybe is like dreaming about this whole game up until now, and he's like in a coma or something. I don't know. I think it's gonna be way more confusing than that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is that forest, the sleeping forest. Yeah, it cuts to a shot of the sleeping forest, which still hasn't been woken up yet. Mm -hmm. But it's like a bunch of trees, and it's almost like Eris is doing one of those like Bugs Bunny, like, I peer out from behind this tree, mm -hmm. and I say something to you, and then I appear out from behind this other tree on the other side of the screen. It gets pretty uh, art film here. Cloud, can you hear me? Behind that tree. Yeah, I hear you. Sorry, what happened? Don't worry about it. I can't help it. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Then why don't you really worry about it? What? And let me handle Sephiroth. This is some artsy shit. And Cloud, you take care of yourself. <laughs> so you don't have a breakdown, okay? Eris is right next to us at the bottom of the crater right now, right? Well, and no, because like Cl Cloud is we, Cloud's gonna wake up and Eris will be gone. Is right. what'll happen at the end of this. Okay, so, so this is like a mind a projection. This is so it's a dream, maybe, or maybe a thing in between dreams where people can hang out. Yeah, that sounds right. You know. Yeah. What is this place? I told you it's the Sleeping this forest. forest. Leads to the city of the ancients yeah. and is called the Sleeping Forest. You've already been here with me. We heard all about it from those people in the Bone Village. It's only a matter of time before Sephiroth uses Meteor. That's why I'm gonna protect it. Only a survivor of the Cetra like me can do it. The secret is just up here. At least it should be. I feel it. It feels like I'm being led by something. Then I'll be going now. I'll come back when it's all over. I'll see you in Disc 3. Harris? No. So Eris like takes off and runs into the light and we try to run after her in slow motion but like our legs won't carry us forward. Yeah, it's like dream running mm -hmm. where you don't actually move. The forest isn't awake yet or something. We need the lunar harp. Hmm. She's thinking of interfering. She will be a difficult one, don't you think? And then Sephiroth shows up. Yeah, it, he, like, floats down in the forest. And he's like, mm, that one is scheming against me. Like, <laughs> you and I will stop her. God, this game is so confusing. We must stop that girl soon. Am I in, like, an animus? Am I, like, in, like, a normal city in, like, invading my you ancestors' look like DNA you members? was having a nightmare. Oh, Barrett. So we wake up in an inn. Yeah, you're not in an animus. You're not plugged into the Matrix. <laughs> Where is this inn? <laughs> is this in Gungaga? Where are we in Bone Village already? No, we're in Gungaga. Oh, okay. <laughs> For some reason, we wake up wait, in Gungaga. Did, yeah, the Temple of the Ancients was not. We weren't like next to Gungaga. It might have been close-ish, but not no, that close. No, I don't think so. I, but <laughs> why here? I don't know. <laughs> How are you feeling? Uh, not good. Not good. No. Better keep it to yourself. 
You know, then why the fuck did you ask, Barrett? Seriously, like, from the beginning, Cloud has been showing himself to be, like, mentally unstable, and at every turn, Barrett's like, man, just keep it together, all right? But he asked like, Cloud, yeah. how are you? And Cloud was like, I'm not doing so good. And he's like, well, then shut the fuck up about it. Yeah, well, I mean, I think he was just giving him a gut check, like, we're all on the verge <laughs> of a nervous breakdown. Like, yeah. don't be a pansy about it. Definitely. <laughs> Everyone's out looking for Eris. City of the Ancients. Eris is headed there. Why did she go by herself? That's a really good question Barrett has. Yeah, well, she took off. She took off telling only one person who was unconscious where she was going <laughs> through a dream. Yeah. Only the Ancients, only Eris can save us from Meteor. Then we must go. Hey, why are you still sitting around? Let's go, Cloud. No, I might lose it again. If Sephiroth comes near me, I might... Why is Cloud the only one going, you guys can't trust me right now? I'm being mind-controlled <laughs> by this guy. I know, like, Barrett seems to be sort of picking up on it, but Tifa, given what we're going to find out later, <laughs> what Tifa knows about Cloud, For like, her she to not should question be, this. Like, having Cloud be in charge, even, you know, is like... Is wrong, yeah. <laughs> yeah, God damn it! it's because of you that Sephiroth got the black materia in the first place. How do you and know? It's your damn fault. Tifa probably oh, yeah, told him what told happened. Told all about what happened. <laughs> I know you got problems, hell, we all do. <laughs> but you don't even understand yourself. I really love that line because it's like slipping in a major theme of the game, mm -hmm. which is you have to know who you are in order to do what you need to do. Yeah, Barrett knows what's up. He's like, you you don't know yourself, man. But yeah. it doesn't matter because there's no getting off of this train. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but you gotta understand there ain't no getting off of this train we're on till we get to the end of the line. Yeah, it's like you can't be in a successful relationship until you know who you are. You can't successfully stop an evil corporation and a magic wizard from <laughs> space, maybe? Space, maybe. <laughs> Without, <laughs> Without that. Without that. Cloud, we came this far. Aren't we going to settle up with Sephiroth? I mean, I got to admit, this scene's a little boring. Well, it's not just boring. It doesn't really make sense. Like, Cloud <laughs> wakes up. Everyone's going, Eris is gone. Right. He's like, I know where she is. She's in the City of the Ancients. Yeah, and not only that, but Cloud just gave the black materia to Sephiroth. Right. All of them are, go are on the one hand, like, telling him you're crazy and you need to figure yourself out, and on the other hand, going, like, we don't have time for that, so <laughs> fuck that, and you're our leader still. Yeah. He's like, you gotta figure yourself out, man, and then also, we can't get off of this train, <laughs> nobody knows who they are, and they manage, what's wrong with you? And... <laughs> Uh, beyond that, we're in Gongaga for some reason, right. which is like on the other side of the planet from where Cloud passed out. I don't know how the fuck we got here. Either way, we decide we got to go to Bone Village and get to the Ancients. Yeah, that's the long and short of this long <laughs> conversation. You're afraid to find out the truth, but why? Because why? Why? It's dangerous, the truth. This disc isn't over. What in the shit? I really thought it was about to end. It must still be about to end. It is like... Oh, we're back in shit town. Come on. Come on let's go find Eris. Yeah. It's not over. What the fuck? Is it gonna end when we go into the forest and wake up the forest? Oh my god. Yeah, this is the Zack house. Yeah, the Zack house. Back in the Zack. To the right. That's where I came from. Back on the Cessna, looking for Bone Village. I don't know why they couldn't have just woken us up in Bone Village if they were just going <laughs> to teleport us somewhere random anyway, True. but, you know. Oh, shit, never mind. I thought it was different. There we go. There it is. Get ready to bone down. It's time. We're going to wake up this fucking forest. I don't know where we're going to get the harp. Do you know where Eris is? Are you talking about that girl? I warned her, but she wasn't in the sleeping forest anyway. Eris came through here and I guess can walk through the sleeping forest while it's asleep. I think because of her special Cetra right. status, she okay. gets to pass through. But there's like an excavation game that we now have to play. Yeah, luckily the harp that wakes up the forest is right next to the forest. Like somebody <laughs> just sort of left it there and it got knocked over and buried, yep. but we can find it. The lunar harp is somewhere in the ground here. We should excavate it oh, for you if you want us to. Dude. Start fucking digging. It's not just the lunar harp you're after. What else are you having us dig for? The lunar harp. So yeah, when you dig here right now, you can select dig for the lunar harp, 
dig for good treasure or dig for normal treasure. Which is weird because presumably <laughs> each of those things is in a specific location. And I, Well, I love the idea of setting out going like we're going on an expedition to see what's out there. <laughs> But like we can choose what we're gonna find, right? That's what. Like, I, yeah. what? like we're gonna find King Tut's tomb or a piece of pottery, and you can pick which one you're gonna look for. Yeah, right no, you now. won't just find one or the other depending on your luck and where you look. Right. You will find the thing you were looking for or nothing at all. <laughs> all right, then I'll lend you some of my stuff. Show us where you want us to dig. What? Oh, boy. My other options were good treasure and normal treasure. I bet there's other shit we can find in Do you here. think normal treasure is better than, weirdly, like, better than? I don't know. Could normal treasure be better than good treasure? You spotted this from a mile away, which is, <laughs> yes, at some point we're going to need to come get the normal treasure. Uh, I guess here? Order a search. We should explain how this excavation game works. Mm -hmm. It's like a triangulation game where yeah. you send out a bunch of workers and tell them where to go, and then all of them will look at the right place. Mm -hmm. And then you pick the convergence point of all of the different workers... Yeah. Eyeballs, and then that's where the treasure is. Mm -hmm. And then they dig it overnight, and they put it in the box near the opening of the town. It's another one of those games that, like, when you describe it, like, when they were designing it, it would be like, so you just made something, like, tedious? Right. That just takes... <laughs> Not, it's not hard even, but it's not fun either. Well, we're trying it just to make takes, this like, hours. takes some amount of time to do. <laughs> like, they didn't even hide the lunar harp somewhere that we have to go get it. No. They just added, like, one small activity that's in between you and the lunar harp. It's not the most fun part of the game, but here we are. Yeah, keep putting here. Them, just put them over here. Over here. And then, like, one over here. The point where the staff's line of vision meets is the dig point. Oh god, select the dig point by- Oh, so you're gonna look where they're looking at. What? What are they all looking at? Maybe it's like right on the corner there that's sticking out of above. Yeah, they all are yeah. looking at this. Oh, this like weird spot? The result of the dig will be in the town treasure box overnight. Okay. God, there's so many stoplights. Just, just, why can't they be green? In the box. What's in the box? What's in the box? Nothing in here. <sighs> Let's go again. Yeah, we blew it on the first try. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't triangulate very well. We just put them all in a straight line because we're fucking idiots, apparently. <laughs> we didn't know. <laughs> place them more, now that we know that it's a triangulation game, we can place them in better positions to look. Okay, so, yeah. And then put one, like, halfway up. Like over then, here? Yeah, then climb up. Put like one in each corner of this place. You don't think it moves, do you? I think it probably does. But it's an excavation. No, it's not. Look at this place. Like here? Yeah, maybe like right there. Fucking be there. What's in the box? Yes! Fuck yes. So we get the lunar harp. And I guess it's time to dig for some good treasure. <laughs> All right, now it's digging time. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> now, now it's time to find some good treasure. Should we try for the normal treasure if we got it? We should finish the disc. I, I'm tired. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I know, but I don't want to miss anything. The bunt line. We got the bunt line. Yeah, after that, and you're like, we should see what the normal treasure is. And I'm like, I just want to get to the end of this, man. I yeah. don't want to spend any time digging holes. It did. I think it was late at night. You can tell from the last two, this episode and the last episode, like, we're getting tired. Mm -hmm. You can hear it. All right, that's enough of this. All right, well, we got the twin harp. I mean, lunar harp. What time was it? After midnight? Yeah. I mean, we've been playing since 10 a.m. It's know. after midnight, and and now we're walking into the sleeping forest, going like, "This is the end of the disc." No, not yet. Okay, when is it? it, it it's a an exciting climax. <laughs> oh yeah, this looks different. The sleeping forest awoke. The sleeping forest turns like a, a greenish hue, mm -hmm. and now we can go through it. Yeah, which takes us into the city of the ancients. Mm -hmm. Whoa, 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 whoa! Kiata. Huh. But first, be sure not to walk through this unremarkable screen because hidden behind a tree <laughs> is a summon materia that I don't know how we found it. I literally, I have no clue. But we did. <laughs> Heck yeah, not missing a thing. Ugh. Oh, 
Oh. Tetra disaster. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Dude, this is the coolest animation. <laughs> this is the best summon. Yeah, this is Kiata, which we just picked up. The, yeah, this summon is like a glacier forms around the enemies that then explodes <laughs> and like five fireballs, like Mario style, like bouncing fireballs, like bounce out and then converge, which creates an enormous wild boar. Right. And he slams the ground with his hoof. Which ripples the ground. Yeah, and that's what causes the damage. At the end, like the earthquake hits them and they take damage. This is my favorite one. This is the best summon animation by far, so far. This is amazing. Holy shit, and then it ripples the ground? There's so many parts to it. Whoa, am I on like a spine? Or are these, was this set up? It's like a walk right. Dude, look at this. So then we come up over a ridge and you can look down and see like the ruins of the city of the ancients. Yeah, the pathways of the ancients look to me like a giant like a dragon spine almost. Yeah. Like they're that stepping stone, but everything is like built in a way that it feels more spine-like. And as you crest the hill and it reveals the city, it it's a beautiful experience. And the architecture of the ancients, it's as though they grew like enormous conch shells mm -hmm. and then like lived inside of the shapes of them. Yeah. The whole thing is like this weirdly nautical place in the middle of these mountains. Mm -hmm. it, it's like... Okay, so the people excavating were excavating, like, the bones and the crashed jets, and on the other side of the hill is this actual ancient ruins of, like, a it's like Atlantis. Yeah, exactly, yeah, like, Atlantis is right over the like, hill. And they're like, there's a pot over here. And they're like, well, too bad we can't get through this forest. <laughs> the thing that opens it up is right it's here. Like we, and we know where it is. God, we know how to triangulate it. These people were all right on the verge yeah. of being the greatest archaeologists of their time. It's a town of nature lovers. <laughs> The way the perspective was revealed, you're too tired to even enjoy it. No, I'm enjoying it. <laughs> too tired to hunt for normal treasure, that's for sure. Yeah, but... Well, I, I hunted <laughs> for the great treasure, and then I, I bailed on normal treasure on your behalf. Thank you. Yeah, this is fucking cool, cool, cool. Huh. And if that last one was any indication, I bet this dungeon is pretty epic. Yeah, you want to not enter this? No, I think... We should do it. All right. Yeah. That eternal question of, are we about to start a thing that's going to take like three hours? Yeah, I was sitting here going in my mind like, doesn't seem like there's random encounters here, but this could be like a, a never-ending thing. thing where we got to choose doors. And I'm tired now. <laughs> do I want to take the risk? Luckily, they just lead you to like the drama. Yeah, and it's yeah. pretty quick. The ancients knew the way of the safe spot too. Oh. God, there's so much of it. City of the Ancients, bro. Yeah, there are no random encounters. Shh. But there's not. There hasn't been so far, and that actually makes this whole thing just navigable. I love that. I've been walking around for a while, and I'm like, it's too early to say. I know. Like, you could have just hit, like, a string where you don't get an encounter for, like, 30 <laughs> like, steps. Shh. <laughs> like... Ugh. Words of the ancients? No good, I can't understand. I'll need some kind of Paris. Yeah, in a lot of the buildings are these weird, like, glowing orbs. Mm -hmm. And the orbs will talk to you, but Cloud just goes like, I don't understand what they're saying. Yeah, it's like they're telepathically transmitting some sort of ancient wisdom, but unless you're a Cetra, I guess, you can't understand it. Yeah. But also, like, the buildings we're walking around in are like, this place is, like, pristine. It's <laughs> like the ancients just <laughs> vanished, and nobody's been back. Like, the beds are all made. Right. Their stuff it's is like out the on the tables. It's like the <laughs> I guess, yeah. <laughs> it's not really like that. Bet, there's a bet. Shall we take a break? So we all decide to take a nap, yeah, sleep for the night. Wait, it's nighttime now? I feel it. What? What is it? Instead of doing what an inn usually does, which is just like bring you back to the same status of game, mm -hmm. but you're healed, it like is dark now. It's yeah, nighttime. there's a cutscene. Eris is here. <laughs> And so is Sephiroth. Cloud is feeling that Sephiroth is around. And that Eris is here, which is like, that's why we came here. We knew that. Right, let's hurry and find Eris. Yeah, it's nighttime over here at the City of the Ancients now. I like the 
their architecture style. So in one of the houses, there's like a center of it that goes down a tunnel. Mm-hmm. Go in there. Where? In the water. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Uh, whoa. There's like a staircase made out of glass. Like we enter like Tron world. Yeah. Like it, you spiral down this glass staircase while like huge spires of glass are yeah, sticking like up around you and it looks superman style it glass looks like you are underwater like it, above yeah. you is the ocean surface i think you are underwater but maybe you're not i like, can't tell i can't it, tell either I don't, but it looked like there was a water surface well there might we be entered. like a membrane but we're not like submerged in water no you know like no. there might be a, a ceiling of water there's probably a hotel like this in hong kong or something <laughs> i don't know but we're descending the most epic glass staircase with no railings that spins around spirally a little bit i'm on the glass stairs of insanity of impossibility and now you're in the city of the ancients holy shit dude yeah, this is cool. dude this game's amazing one of the best ever made <laughs> And then you end up at, like, is this, like, the real City of the Ancients? Yeah, that and up was, above was, like, a fake-out? It was a fake-out for if anybody in Bone Village ever finds it, which they haven't. They they haven't and they won't. Um, but, but there's a secret other City of the Ancients. Yeah, it's almost like the nice part of town for the Ancients is, like, down underground at the bottom of this staircase. Like the opposite of Midgar or Junon, where, Yeah, like, where you build up, usually. Like, right. you can imagine those fantasy cities were, like, at the top of the... Spire is the castle the or whatever. The Setra are just the opposite of the Shinra, you know? Yeah, ex yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you get to the bottom of the staircase and there's like a marble village around like a beautiful <laughs> gazebo. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this. Yeah. Now we're down here and there's a save point. I'm so happy that there haven't been random encounters in I this know, area. this is making it so bearable. It's like, yeah. Whoa, there she is. This would have been really, really, really hard. I would have hated it. It just would have taken so long. I, I would have gone to all those places, and it just would have taken hours. So Eris is kind of standing on the center of this, like, gazebo that's, like, floating out in a pool of water, and to get there, there's some stones you got to jump across. Yeah, yeah. I love this glass gazebo. <laughs> mm hmm Hop. Eris. Oh, no way, hop. 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 Hopping our way to Eris. Yeah. It's a little crazy to me that Tifa and Barrett are standing there watching this guy who they know is possessed by Sephiroth jump towards Eris. They just want to see what he does next on his journey of personal growth and discovery, that's, Jeff. That's right. <laughs> Hop. Whoa. No. Not, not like this. Is she frozen in glass? Or am I looking through glass? I'm not sure. Eris is not frozen in glass. There's just seems there's a lot of light around her and above her. And Cloud is in the gazebo and he takes out his sword. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna cut her out. She must be frozen, yeah. Wait. I'm controlling this. Yeah, Cloud starts doing a bunch of weird motions, and no matter what button you hit, he starts like moving around and almost like thrusting at Yeah, Eris. like pushing like right and left causes him to like pick his sword up a little bit and move a little bit. Mm -hmm. What this turns out to be is I think they're trying to make you feel like you're combating Sephiroth's influence over Cloud, right. like he's resisting some kind of thing, but it really feels like because you hit one button at a time, you're going like, am I just like thrusting in her face? What am I doing? <laughs> Hey, Eris. Hey, Eris. Oh, hey, hey. I don't know what... Cloud, stop! Oh, what are you making me do? Okay, so I was in, like... I was trying to stop myself, but I was right. being mind-controlled to kill Sephiroth, her. Sephiroth, yeah. Okay, that's what that was. Whoa. And here we go, the big 3D pre-rendered cutscene. Yeah, we pull back and we can see that it's like the lighting in here is out of control. There's like reflective water effects bouncing off of everything. And Eris is there looking as beautiful as ever. Yeah, she's like on the ground like praying. She's on her, on her knees with her hands clasped. Mm -hmm. We can see the gazebo is like lit by a spotlight that's shining through the water from above. Yeah. So it's got this like ocean effect. You have a nose. I know, God. Hey, Eris. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit! 
Sephiroth comes flying downward with his sword in hand and skewers Eris through. Yeah, and as he's like falling, he like comes out of the light and around them are these, they're probably like gargoyle sculptures, but right. it looks like angels and demons are yeah. like watching this from above. It feels so just, li- the hair on your arms like just like, Bonk, straight up, <laughs> straight hair erection. And <laughs> Eris is there, sword through the belly. Oh, fuck. Do you think this is when it happens? <laughs> she, yeah, this is when it happens. Her her materia, she, this is going to be important. Right, she uh, had a marble in her hair. And it kind of flies out of her hair and bounces down the steps into the water. Did she have a material? Was she holding materia out in her hair? Yeah. Holy shit. Oh my god, this is so cool. This is insane. This is amazing. <laughs> I'm so glad you think so. This is it, you know? Like, yeah. This is why the game is so amazing. Yeah, I mean, like, we talk a lot of shit. Like, we've been through Super Dunk and Chocobo Racing, <laughs> and whatever Fort Condor was, we still have no idea. Yeah. And all of Midgar. Yeah. And climbing up that tower with the rope with swing. The, with the... And all, and, like, all the of the library that is, puzzle. Like, all of that is excused in in this moment. <laughs> like, and, and other moments like it that are to come. But yeah. it's, it's just like, this is... This is what makes up for all of the failed experimentation <laughs> is like the solid solid moments like this. No, this is this is incredible. This just works emotionally and story-wise and is a shock. Like even though I I'm like aware that this was coming. It's emotionally devastating. It to- oh my god. And now it's a Lego piece <laughs> and he's like standing there like I did it. Eris. Eris, no. Cloud is holding Eris in his hands as she dies. Yeah. Sephiroth is standing behind him, arms raised like champion. Yeah, touchdown. How are we going to bring her back? This can't be real. There's clones or something. Can we chrono trigger her? Do not worry. Soon the girl will become a part of the planet's energy. No. All that is left is to go north. The promised land waits for me over the snowy fields. There I will become <laughs> Shut up Uniting the planet as, as Shut up girl. Shut up The cycle of nature and your stupid plan Don't mean a thing mm-hmm. Eris is gone Eris will no longer talk No longer laugh, cry, or get angry And I'll never know what those fucking stones Were trying to tell me <laughs> What about us? What are we supposed to do? What about my pain? My fingers are tingling. My mouth is dry. My eyes are burning. What are you saying? Are you trying to tell me that you have feelings too? Of course, who do you think I am? Ha ha ha. Stop acting as if you were sad. There's no need to act as though you're angry either. Because, Cloud, you are. Sephiroth does a spin and flies off into the sky. Mm-hmm. And then he dive bombs back down at mm-hmm. us. He's not going to finish that thought. Whoa! Dude, this music is insanely great. Whoa! And now we get in a Genova fight. Aqualung? That's not this song. <laughs> yeah, I'm not really ready for this. <laughs> You're going to need to heal like right now. He never, he never finished his thought, he just flew away and then a fight started. He didn't finish his thought. His, his thought, I think, might have been something like, you're asleep in my bed. <laughs> I mean, is this Sephiroth that I'm fighting? I think it's another Genova chunk. Okay. You really should heal. I'm doing it as fast as I can. <laughs> like, like, nobody has it. Nobody has any fucking heal magic. I used an explosion. <laughs> the Bahamut sound effects and this beautiful music is... Dude, this is incredible. This is why everybody thinks it's the greatest game ever, is you have to get to this part. 
and I mean, you're so used to when a fight starts that that battle music that you've heard ev- forever for mm-hmm. multiple games happens that when they just like switch it out on you and keep the soundtrack playing, <laughs> it's so effective. Right. <laughs> I can't even believe it. It is. Yeah, it's... Oh. Wait, wait. Wait. Wait, oh no. Wait. Wait. Wait, no. Wait. Sephiroth killed Eris and then he won, and that's the end of the game. Yeah, we really got stomped by Genova. <laughs> Just like every awesome cutscene in these games, we're gonna watch it at least yeah, twice. Right? <laughs> we can't get out of that. That's the first game over. That's the first game over. <laughs> that didn't have to go down like that. The film tour. The, f- the film tour. And that is actually the first time we game over in the entire trip. Inches away from the end of disc one, <laughs> Sephiroth himself, the big fight, that's what did it. Mm-hmm. We saved right before that, right? Like, I don't remember. How far before it? <sighs> well, we almost made it through disc one without dying. Yeah, for real, I didn't even think about that. But we did. If this isn't the end of the disc, I, I it don't... It is, it has it. to be. Alright, well... You know, if you're gonna, you're gonna have to see anything twice. Yeah. Yeah, the way this scene plays out is actually extraordinary. It's like, well-written, well-paced, the scene, at least. <laughs> right, I just gotta hit a bunch of buttons, and I, I just keep trying to not... So, we're watching it again. Mm-hmm. There weren't as many scenes as as he, I thought there might have been of like, is this it? Is this uh, like it seems like she's about to die? She's in danger or something? But yeah, well, I mean, they don't like most people didn't know it was coming, so they have no reason to like fake you out, you know? Right, right, <laughs> right. They're not playing to that. Yeah, they're not. Yeah. I mean, this is beautiful. Yeah, and this is done in a way that it's like this is totally one upping Kefka. Killing the world, like by oh, making it so much more personal. For and, sure, I feel the yeah, same. Yeah. I mean, I liked Six a lot. I thought it was an amazing game, but I don't think there's anything it could do that would like put it in the realm of this for me in my, in my life. Yeah, this is so good. This part. So we make it through the cutscene, and I'm fighting Genova again. Oh no, reflect is on now. Yeah, you put it on at the beginning. <sighs> well, I had, or I just cast the thing. I thought I got it on before. What the fuck? God, I'm terrible at fighting Genova. Yeah, we we watched that whole cutscene again, and then like immediately you like wait, you're, you're, she's reflected already, and I'm like, yeah, that was the opening move, and, and then, then you just get killed I just by your own spells. Destroy myself. <laughs> what was that? He aqua lunged you. Oh my god. What, dude? 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 What am I supposed to do? I've got Phoenix Down Syndrome. This is it. What am I supposed to fucking do? What was I supposed to do? What what was I supposed to do? Play better? I don't know what to tell you, man. (laughs) Not die. Avoid magic. Have Tifa only casting Cure 2 over and over. Oh my god. Third time's a charm. I'm sorry. Well, it's okay. Mm-hmm. Don't be sorry. We're just fucking... We're, we got to the first hard thing in the whole game. I know, but like... Fuck. Mm. Yeah. Do, 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 do. <gasps> okay, okay, okay. What are you making me do? Look at that sick earring. I never noticed that. It's a good thing this is the third time we're watching this. Yeah, Cloud has a real, like, 90s boy band earring thing going on. (laughs) He has an earring. Yep. It was the 90s. Yeah, you better fucking believe it. God, this is so cool. Yeah, man, they have to get better at telling stories than this. 
in order to top this, and they just aren't gonna do it. And never did, obviously. Nine, maybe. Oh, that's interesting. Nothing to exactly rival this moment, but nine as a whole is really, really good. I kind of like that for it being one of the most important moments in all of every Final Fantasy game mm -hmm. that we're watching it three times. Yeah, we're going to watch. <laughs> You're going to get our money's worth here. <laughs> well, it's like the beauty of this. Like, and I don't just mean that in the superficial sense. Like, is so... It's also hard to, like, once you've done this, have character deaths be truly surprising and, you know, like... Yeah. Well, I don't think they ever did anything quite like this again, you know. All right, here's your big, your big shot. All right. This time the pro is going to take on Genova. I've been watching going like, I know exactly what I'm going to do every <laughs> single turn, like... <laughs> so far, so good. But he hasn't thrown any Jethro Tull at you. Not yet. You're playing like a man determined to go to sleep <laughs> soon. I just, we can't lose. <laughs> can't lose. <laughs> Ryan finally beats Genova. Mm -hmm. The wizard bracelet. Good work. Because you're a puppet, says Genova. Oh, she finished his sentence for him. Oh, I'm a puppet? Yeah, so Sephiroth started the sentence by saying, because you're a... Uh... And then it turns out... And then Genova finishes his sentence saying, you're a puppet. You're a puppet. No puppet. No puppet. <laughs> Barrett's like, welcome to the club of people who have lost their close friends, Cloud. <laughs> this is what I wanted for you from the beginning. I'm V for vendetta-ing you. Welcome to the cause. <laughs> That's tough, buddy. But yeah. we've all got problems. Remember Jesse and Wedge and Biggs? Yeah, I seriously. think those were their names. No, this is this still really works. Yeah, it's like, amazing. even with knowing that it's gonna happen. But man, if I didn't... I know, it would have just been... <laughs> Holy shit. Cloud picks up Eris. Cloud walks her outside to, like, a big pool that's big really pool deep. Of water, yeah. I'm, like, I'm emotional now, but, like, I would have been, like, really emotional. Cloud beautifully lays Eris down into the water like it's a baptism or something. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're laying her into the water? Yeah, and she kind of sinks down to the bottom. I always wondered about the logistics of this. He must be standing, like, on a ledge, right, right. on the edge of a very deep chasm. Right. Because, like, he's standing up, and yeah. she floats down, like, <laughs> so far to the bottom. Oh, my God. And she drifts to the bottom of the ocean. So then we all, I guess, regroup back inside one of the, like, ancient houses. Yeah, like, th maybe this is the one that we took that nap in. Yeah, it might be. Everyone, listen to me. I'm Cloud, ex-soldier, born in Nibelheim. They're like, we know. I came <laughs> to settle up with Sephiroth. We know that, too. What is going on? I came here by my own free will, or so I thought. However, to tell the truth, I'm afraid of myself. There's a part of me that I don't understand. The, that part that made me give the black materia to Sephiroth. If you hadn't stopped me, Eris might have been killed. <laughs> <laughs> what? There's something inside of me, a person I who's not really me. I think he meant to me. say, I might have... Yeah, no, I think I... Yeah. God, why is this translation so fucking god-awful? <laughs> That's why I should quit this journey. Before I do something terrible, don't put in disc two. So Cloud is, like, trying to rediscover his motivation to go after Sephiroth? I think he's trying to go, like, is that even my motivation? Right. Who am I? Like, what's going on? But Aerith just died, so I think we know where this is going. Mm -hmm. He destroyed my hometown five years ago, killed Aerith, and now is trying to destroy the planet. I'll never forgive Sephiroth. I must go on. I have a favor to ask of you. Will you all come with me? <laughs> They're like, yes. They're like, dude to save me from doing something terrible. I don't know, man. I don't know how Eris tried to save the planet from the meteor, and I guess now we'll never know. But we still have a chance. We must get that black materia back before Sephiroth uses it. Let's go. All right. Yes. End of disc one. It kind of would have been awesome to have end of disc one come up before Cloud's speech there and have it be on Aerith hitting the bottom of the ocean. Yeah. 
I kind of wish it was something else. I feel like it needed something after air is hitting the ground, but I don't think that was exactly like what I wanted. Right. Oh, and we should mention for people who are wondering, what image of disc two did we get? Because I guess when you get to the end of each disc, like there's a random chance of what insert disc two oh, image right, is right, associated right. with. Like, is it Cat Sith or is it this or that? We actually don't get to see one because I think we shut down the game before exiting the menu. Mm -hmm. So none of that. We get it for disc three, but it's not there now. Wow. Yeah, double save it. I'm going to put... Wow. Yeah, that was amazing. Yeah, really good. I'm taking out disc one. And I'm going to shut off the machine. Yeah. So we got here on Saturday. Mm Mm-hmm. Saturday night, and we only played That fully. doesn't really count, yeah. A Sunday, few hours that night. It's full Sunday, full Monday, full... And then this was all day Tuesday. Yeah. Oh, God. I mean, Hearing this makes me want to go back and, like, slap myself and go, like, you guys could have gone on a badass vacation, yeah. not played Final Fantasy, Ridden come back... A bike, seen a lake. Like, then actually just played it at Jeff's house. Yeah. Like, God, <laughs> we spent so long at this cabin... <laughs> So three full days and some change, and you and disc one is down. Mm-hmm. And I feel fully into the game. Like now, I now I understand. I mean, yeah, and that like, because it's like when you look at it, it's like, whoa, that was a chunk. Like that was like <laughs> that was like an act. That was one act. Yeah, that's just like mind meltingly. Ep- it's so yeah, huge. It's so like, bad. <laughs> the city of the ancients like, <sighs> and it's like even the stuff that feels like bloat at a certain point when I start to think about it I'm like wait are they telling me something else about the-? like no there's bloat there, there is, is no there is bloat like, but I mean like even, not that, not that even you're questioning the, even the bloat ties in thematically no you're right you're right here the bloat <laughs> is just bloat now that we've been over this whole thing so many times like not all of it ties in thematically but that's the power of this moment that yeah, this moment it's true. lets you I know. just exactly. I'm going. You know what? Maybe all of it was good. Every single piece of it was actually amazing. They like rewrite your memory. And also, like judging the writing on this game, we can only judge it in like its broadest strokes because we have no idea. Like the translation is such a mess that yeah. it's like hard to yeah. tell. Like the <laughs> moments, like. In that speech after Eris dies, before the end of disc one, there's typos. But man, the broad strokes. The broad are just strokes. Like unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm so glad that still holds up. There's Haley out there. Yeah. Haley. After all these years, like that's still totally earned. Yeah, it really is. Like, and you really like Eris in a way that. I don't know. It's just, She's it's so they many... totally nail her being like so charming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would be surprised if we see a moment that has that kind of weight in any other Final Fantasy game ever again. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's shocking. It's yeah. actually shocking that they do that in the way that they do that because it, it also like doesn't telegraph itself. It's total because it puts you in this peaceful place where there's not even fights. It feels like there's not even a threat. Right. That's a good point. <laughs> And the music that's playing the whole time is like, boop, boop, beep, boop, ba, boop, beep, boop, boop. And you just figure Which is the music I you're think gonna that go plays when you her. You're going to have some confrontation with Sephiroth. You, it feels like it's heading towards a climax, but you don't think that she's going to die. I also love over the course of the entire first disc, like, how much it is that you're playing catch up with Sephiroth, who's like on this mission that nobody even understands. Right, like, yeah. Shira yeah. is doing something, and you're doing something, and yeah. then there's, it's just like he's like God, what so is, far out ahead. How are there two acts ahead, and not one? I think that the third disc is like story wise, like very short. Right. My prediction is we're gonna be like really disc two is over already. Okay. Yeah. Like compared to the, because compared to the, like, when are we no gonna way. do all the optional bosses? Is that in disc three? I bet that's all disc three. It's all gonna be end game. Right, yeah. right. So yeah. disc three is like the end game. Mm. It's all on there, I guess. Well, that's exciting. Yeah. How do you feel after that day? <laughs> really tired. I'm really tired. Well, we'll get some sleep and then get right the fuck back yeah. at it. And that's episode 22 and the end of disc one. And the death of Eris. The death of Eris has mm-hmm. occurred. Can you believe it? 
Did we, anybody not see it coming? The only milestone I can really think of in all of Final Fantasy. I don't know that there's like anything specific to look forward to anymore. Uh, well, for <clears> me personally, it'll be fighting Yizmat again. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, there's... God. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to have those optional bosses in all of them. Mm -hmm. And this one coming well, up. As now we mentioned, Disc 3 is going to be a lot of fun. Now that we're over the Disc 1 hump, Disc 2 is going to be, like, short and sweet and great. God, and I love Disc 2. Disc 3 is going to be never-ending and a nightmare and make us never want to play any games ever again. I think that's totally accurate. Um, just to give you guys the road map of, of where yeah. we're headed. Uh, so I think next week we start off with a breakfast and then head to Snowtown. Oh, good. <laughs> we're going Learn to... about Professor Gast. It's always, it's so funny how you can time out. Like, you never go to the Snow Village first in any of these games, no. right? You always go there, like, in the middle or towards the end. Mm -hmm. You go, to, they're like, where now? Usually Some after Some places you've are been... cold, right? Yeah. We haven't been anywhere cold yet. Well, you've probably <laughs> been to a beach town already. Mm -hmm, the and... desert for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so we got to go to the opposite. Yep. That's what's coming up next week. Yeah, I, I mean... I feel like we said our thoughts in the episode about how amazing of a moment this actually is, mm -hmm. and that like even knowing it was coming, it still landed very emotionally for me. The whole like end of this disc and like going right into the next one, I feel like the narrative is moving so mm -hmm. fluidly and well and driving you along that it, it all really works well. Yeah. Even when it doesn't make any, when you stop to look at it, you go like, wait a minute, is Sephiroth a person or well that's the thing about were we talking doing this to Nova show? or Sephiroth what is uh, we're what constantly stopping to look too closely at yeah this. if you look closely at it it all kind of falls apart but if you're going along with it it's great right I mean <laughs> just like life you know don't if you you know inspect your whole, whole life at all pretty much you're gonna go wait a minute what am I doing wait, I thought that was our oh my god I'm a person here standing was, on this uh, planet and then <laughs> an examined life is worth living well yeah but if you look too closely you can just go like no this actually makes sense <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm stable how? A medium level a me examination of your life. that microscope to be focused is all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you want to enter the life stream? Uh, yeah, let's slip through the seams between the atoms and touch the reality beyond our own minds. Let's do it. And here we are in the live stream it's between surprisingly the spacious between the cracks. It is. I wouldn't have thought that there would be this much. I mean, like, it seems endless when I look that direction. It is, actually. It is. Feeling any vibes out there, Jeff? Yeah, yeah. Oh, here comes a message. Mm -hmm. it, it's, you know what? I feel for the vibe, and the vibe comes. The message reads, Do you like tabletop RPGs? Would you like to have a great time playing your next game? Check out Interparty Conflict. It's a weekly discussion podcast where the hosts, Gabe and Jeff, answer your questions to help you and your group have a great gaming session. In addition to answering questions, each week they feature a magic item from the Dragon's Horde, plus a memorable character death on the Funeral Pyre. They even host questions on social media and read listener responses every week. So become a part of the discussion and give Interparty Conflict a listen wherever you find podcasts. It's our old friends Gabe and Jeff from Interparty Conflict. Yeah, we actually got to go on to their show. We were we, guests. We enjoy some tabletop role-playing from time to time. Yes, we do. They're a really fun show. They've actually gotten a live stream message before. I think mm -hmm. it was the like the first episode of this season. And uh, yeah, those segments are great. Like If you need ideas for magical items, and it's always so fun to hear about character deaths, too, because that's yeah. like, sort of like the crux of the game. Yeah, that's a segment called The Funeral Pyre, which mm -hmm. I think is like, it's listener-submitted character deaths of like from their games mm -hmm. it's a really great podcast well I, yeah we also told some character deaths of our own I mm -hmm. believe that's we right on, yeah go check out our episode if you're interested or just check out any episode they're really great and they're helpful with your D, &D game mm -hmm. so check them out at inner party conflict and with that let's get the hell out of here let's do it and we're back if you're interested in a live stream message, they are $25 a piece, and you can just email nocappodcast at gmail.com. That's N O C K A T with the subject line live stream, and we'll make it happen. We do the payments through PayPal because we're totally independent. 
And yeah, thank you so much to Gabe and Jeff for that message again. Thank you very much. And with that, please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts or wherever the fuck you want. Yeah, don't let anyone tell you you can't review our show there because this isn't like the place for that. Tell them, fuck you. (laughs) I have a review and you got to read it because it's going to change your life. So go do that. You can find us at knowingcanknowaboutthis.com. I never say that. You can, though. <laughs> uh, you can find us at NoCap Podcast on Twitter. That's N O C K A T. Thank you so much to the current Patreon subscribers. Yes, as always, huge thank you to our Patreon subscribers. And uh, thank you to future Patreon subscribers that can go find us at patreon.com slash NoCap. Mm-hmm. If you want to support the show, that is a great way to do it. Um, mm-hmm. We have a couple incentives there. You can also, if you want to support the show, we have some merchandise available in the form of mugs and t shirts. The mugs are really nice. Mm-hmm. The t shirts are really nice as well. All of those come with stickers so you can vandalize whatever you want. Buses, bathrooms, stalls. That's right. Just go to Etsy.com and search No One Can Know About This mm-hmm. or No Cat mm-hmm. Podcast and you should find it. And yeah, like we mentioned, Livestream is a great way to support the show as well as get a message that you want us to read on the air. Mm-hmm. And the last and best way to support the show is to talk about it incessantly to anyone that will listen to you. <laughs> that is That's the last the best. last best <laughs> way to support the show. So we hope you do that. And with that, here's a little no one can know about this dessert. This week, you know what? Let's have breakfast for dessert. <laughs> breakfast Let's get egg McMuffins. Egg McMuffins for dessert. <laughs> Here you go. What, what? When I say pig in a blanket, what what food item do you imagine? What's it like? It's a short wiener wrapped with something uh, that you can get. Uh, it, it's a triangle, a whole bunch of them. And they're kind of attached together, but you can pull them apart. And if you wrap that triangle around the pork sausage and put it in the oven and bake it, they're good. Oh yeah. That's a pig in a blanket. Like what time of day do you, would you eat a pig in a blanket? What, like, what meal is it for? Well, I think that can be eaten at breakfast, lunch, or dinner. I wouldn't specialize, but I don't have any gas in my apartment, so I can't do pig in a blanket. Okay, thanks. It doesn't work in a microwave. You're right, you have to bake it. All right, cool, thank you.